I recently purchased Spriter to do uh, sprites in my game. Uh, it's a 2D animation rigging package. Uh, similar, it supports rigging similar to what you traditionally see in a 3D program, but in 2D. Uh, it has a, a JSON file format that's exported that's readily importable into a game. And what attracted to me it is that sort of indie spirit, the openness of it, the uh, the this you know the the fact that it looked like it was be pretty straightforward to import into the game. Uh, unfortunately, being a new project and being recently kickstarted. Its uh, its documentation isn't really where you'd like it to be to you know really quickly pull it into your game and so I figured after I was done I would uh, release my co loading code and do a quick video so that to help other people kind of get over that hump uh, of figuring out how to pull it in the game engine I'm using or the game library I'm using is Love 2D it's a Lua layer on top of SDL and some other various library. It's really powerful, has a lot of functionality, very easy to use. Uh, I'm really stoked about this library. My code isn't really that coupled to love. I mean, I'm using it for rendering uh, some basic file I.O., but it's not super duper coupled. I mean, it should be fairly straightforward to um, port this over to, to I mean, it, other languages of the platforms. Uh, my code is pretty well documented, so I'm going to sort of show you um, the uh, the renderer. So here is one of my boss characters. Um, and then this right here is the sort of hello world gray guy that comes with Spriter. They, they have it for download on their page. Um, sort of shows some basic uh, functionality. Um, and then they have a skeleton. I like this guy a lot. He's pretty cool. And so you can see, pretty neat. Um, my Render supports bones. You know, you, I show the bones. Uh, I'm not interpolating the bones because I was using them for debugging the actual interpolation to show a before and after, and, you know, a delta. Um, so, um, so that's pretty much what it looks like. You know, at runtime, it's very flexible, very powerful. Uh, so to kind of start delving into the code, um, I have a uh, a library file called spriter.lua. I have one dependency, which is dkjson. Um, I think the yeah the license is in there. So, well, maybe he's got basic information about his library in there. Uh, so the reason I'm using DKJSON is um, that the scone files are JSON. And one of the good things about using a higher level language like Lua or JavaScript is that when you do a JSON decode of a file, you can sort of use that decoded data as first class data. It's a straight up object in your language. So unfortunately, if you're doing something in C Sharp or, or Java or C, um, there's going to be a little bit more overhead in getting a, you know, a language level data structure that represents this because you know it's strongly typed and everything. Whereas with Lua, I can just decode the file as is and then just kind of hydrate this object with what I need to render, and then I'm good to go. Um, but all of this stuff should be, I mean, with the exception of that one fact. All of, all of the principles in this uh, in this loader are the same. I mean, it's just the only real difference would be that rather than having this sort of one step where you grab this one cool object, you kind of have to build your own scaffolding of various support classes uh, for everything. Because you really can't, use, generally speaking, you can't use that JSON data as is in one of these more strongly typed languages. Now what I do here is I set the meta ta table of the spriter data I loaded from JSON to um, the spriter class. And so basically every method I imp implement like this is now inherited by the JSON data I decoded. So that's very convenient. So when, all of these methods that you see above um, are intended to be called off of this spriter data thing. So with the exception of this one method, this load spriter method is intended to be called from spriter proper. And so you can see um, here, uh, you know, we're storing Spriter in this right here. And right here is where we're actually doing the load. And from that point on, we call methods using the colon uh, syntax off of that data. Um, so um, one thing worth mentioning is that the, the way the data is stored um, it, it does a lot of, um, it has a lot of self-referential information in it, such as right here you've got parent5. Uh, now, 
What that means is, is that this is an object ref, or actually this is in the bone ref section. So it's saying, hey, my parent is a bone ref, and it's index 5. And so you have to go into the bone ref array, get index 5. Um, this, the, bear in mind that none of these references are globally unique. They're all array indices and by convention in particular arrays, depending on what the thing is referencing. Now, in order to um, cleanly use this in Lua, I do a pass on the data structure, and I update all IDs from being zero indexed to one indexed. So that, I mean, it's not 100% necessary, but working with zero-based indexes in, or arrays in Lua is really painful. So I did that conversion. I do a pass where I convert all angles to radians, just because every method that I use supports radians. Here's where I actually go into the file system, make sure all files and folders exist, and load. This is one of the places where you actually have some love coupling. I'm calling a love load file method. And, you know, I'd like to take a, a minute just to point out, you know, if you're just going to use the library, all you really have to do is just do the load spriter and then do the rendering stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm covering these other aspects mainly for people who plan on uh, implementing their own loader. The update file references loops through the whole data structure and anywhere where that's referencing a file index, it changes it to a actual object reference. And I have a convention by which anytime I do a conversion from an internal index reference to an actual object reference, I prefix that with CYC. And this allows me to, in my print table debug method, anytime it runs into a CYC, it doesn't recurse into that table, so you can do a table dump without recursing inf infinitely. Um, and then here I'm looping through the data structure and creating re key references, timeline references, parent references. Finally, uh, I'm applying the transformations. The data in the file is actually stored um, relative. And in order to actually do your rendering, you need to apply from parent to child the various transformations before you can actually render. So that's what this pass is for. Uh, in terms of the actual rendering, uh, one thing worth noting is that I'm, I don't have any support for explicitly rendering backwards. What I'm doing is enforcing that your video card supports Canvas, which pretty much everything now does. And I'm rendering, when the animation's inverted, I render, render onto a Canvas, and then I, I flip the Canvas uh, before rendering. I mean, this is, this is another thing that's kind of coupled to love. Most graphics APIs will support some form of off-screen rendering that you can blip backwards onto the screen. Um, now, one thing um, is when I build build frame data, that's that's an important thing. So uh, let me. Uh, so from the from the draw, um, there's a method called get frame data, and if you look at get frame data. I, based upon the time, I get the current animation. Now, to the, the way that the current animation is determined is lo love has an update method that gets called with the delta time, and so our sprite of data expects a call to occur, and it expects to be passed a delta time, which is going to expected to be the fraction of a second since the last time update was called. So. If you have, let's say you loop every 10 times a second, every time you'd be, you'd be sending 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, etc. And so generally whatever game library you're using will take care of this for you, but Spriter, uh, this, this Spriter library I've written expects to be passed uh, delta time for the update to determine what the proper animation is. And so when we call get frame, it, frame data, uh, it calls get current animation. The way it knows the current animation is based upon how much time has elapsed since the animation started, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, if we, so we grab our current frame data. If our current frame data does not exist, or if it's changed since the last time we grabbed the frame data, we will build a new frame data. And so if you look in, in however, if if it's the same one as last time, we just return that. So if you go to our build frame data, we grab all of our keys and all of our stuff, we loop through our bones, we store them, we loop through our object references to store them, and then here is where we grab our next frame and perform all of our, uh, our, our calculations on what needs to be um, interpolated, and then here we create a lambda function on our individual piece of image data uh, that gets called in the update. So if you look at um, here on our spriter update, 
we're calling the frame data update lambda that we we injected um, somewhere. Where was I? Now I'm lost. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. All right, so this right this right here is where we're building that uh, lambda function. Now, what's important to note, this is this is one thing that caught me up quite a bit, is that you can linear interpolate our, our positions, but with our angle you can't. You have because if you want to go from 10 degrees to let's say 350 degrees, the proper thing to do is to go from, you know, from 10 to 0, then from 0 to 350, or I'm sorry, from 359 to 350. Uh, but the mathematical way of doing that would be go from 10 up through 350. So in order to correct for this error, there's this lerp angle method that basically is smart enough to know that if you've got a, 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 a distance that's going, that's crossing the zero boundary, it figures out the, the exact point at which it needs to do that flipping so that you're not, so that you go down to zero and then, you know, from 359 or vice versa. And so this lerp angle is very important. That one caught me up. I thought that I could just do it one time when I was calculating my keyframes, but it's you actually have to do it for every update. So that's one important thing that's very easy to mess up. Uh, so let me kind of look around through the code and sort of eyeball everything and see if I'm missing any large scale things that are worth mentioning. I'm converting to radians, um, updating parent references, update file references, timelines, get bones. Uh, yeah, I have this get animation by name method. I mean, that's just um, all the, the animations in the file are actually named, and so you have the, the ability to, to pull to actually set one by name. Um, I don't know if I mentioned the uh, I, I've got this rotate point method, which rotates a point around. Oh, bone running. One thing that's kind of worth uh, worth mentioning is that. The bones, by convention, are, are structured a little oddly. Uh, the bones in the data are represented as... Let me see if I can find them. They're kind of weird. Here we go. So a bone is expected to be a... This W, this width, is actually the length of the bone. And so what you do is you start your bone off at the origin pointing to 0 or uh, y equals 0, x equals 200. And then your bone is generated by uh, rotating that around the origin based upon the angle of the current keyframe, and then you translate that by wherever the bone is. Um, all of this is documented in the code, but it's worth noting that, that that's a little bit confusing. Um, that's actually why I never did do the interpolation, because I was just lazy, because that's a lot of work. Not a lot, I mean, compared to everything else, but it's not like people are looking at the bones all the time. Plus, I mean, I was using them heavily to, to debug the interpolation, so it kind of helped to have them not interpolating while I was I had broken interpolation. Um, let me see if anything else kind of jumps out to me. These right here are two hooks. When the animation loops, this gets called. When the animation stops, this gets called. Um, no, so that's pretty much that. Let me just look through the main code real quick. Um, See if there's anything in there. You in the uh, I didn't the, in the uh, the main program. You can turn on and off interpolation. Um, you can go full screen. Uh, yeah, one thing. Spriter's y coordinates go up. Y positive y goes up. Most graphics APIs the y goes down. So I have this little function here that just transform that just transforms uh, between. Um, you know, the spriter behavior and screen behavior. I have this draw debug info, which draws bones by default. I have this big blocked out piece of code, which will draw points for all the corners of the images for debugging rotation. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, I hope this helps in some way with uh, any usage of this library or writing your own.